Next up, Bitcoin reaches new highs as central banks hint at more stimulus. Not really a hint that's going to happen. So what do we got here? So because we have issues with this coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemic, and whether if you believe it is real or not, it is still causing havoc on the economy. And Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said in a post-election address last week that further support is likely to be needed. Like, he's not going to come out and say, we're going to print money until the cows come home. <laughs> he's going to say, hey, look, we're going to support you until needed, which is code for let's just turn those money printers on. Fine. Powell will speak again today at 1845 UTC to address the falling bond yields in the U.S. And I've been I've heard a couple of economists already say to get out of stocks and bonds and just put it into dollars, which I thought was weird because Druckenmiller said that he is going to be shorting the dollar because he expects it to go down precipitously. We will see. Anyhow, the employment situation in the U.S. has improved slightly as jobless claims fell to 709,000. And the economy is on a steady, if not uncertain, path to recovery. I don't know where you're at, uh, but I've got a couple of friends who do not have jobs anymore and are really struggling to find uh, new jobs. Now, uh, tell me where you're at and tell me if the economy is recovering where you're at. I'm just curious to see how things are going on globally. Anyhow, th there's a news from Pfizer and BioNTech that they achieved 90% effectiveness of their COVID vaccine trial, which is great, followed by a Russian's claim of 92% efficiency. Uh, I guess I'm not going to put too much faith in Russian medicine, but maybe I'm wrong. If you're from Russia, tell me how wrong I am. Restored faith in ending the pandemic. However, America and Europe continue to report a record number of COVID-19 cases, and these require the government's immediate attention. So here's the problem. I just left El Paso, Texas to come to Houston. We had to be here for business, and um, uh, they are really hurting. They're, like The cases went from like 500 a day to a 1,500. I think now it's like two or 3,000. So it's pretty awful over there. Uh, we already lost our nephew. He passed away from coronavirus. And then uh, one of my friends, uh, Ernie, just passed away today from coronavirus. And uh, Ernie was a guy that when I was a director of nursing, uh, we worked together uh, at this agency. And he was a good guy. He's uh, <laughs> he's a little bit older. He's uh, in his uh, early 60s now. Well, I guess, yeah, early 60s. And uh, he just didn't want to go on an event, and he passed away today. So this is one of those things where it's an awful situation, and it's a weird, it's a weird virus. Like a friend of mine, Mike, he just had like a really bad headache, and that was it. And he, you know, got got through it, no big deal. A couple other friends of mine, they just didn't have any symptoms, and then that was it. And then, you know, my friend Ernie just it just didn't make it. So I don't know what's going on essentially with that, but. Uh, I mean, we'll see how it all works out. I don't know if this this vaccine really is uh, the greatest thing of all time. But I will say this, uh, with all this uncertainty, uh, our market is going to uh, is going to increase uh, pretty well. So we will see. And now global central bank bosses and financial experts came together for the 2020 edition of the uh, central bank's annual forum. That sounds like a real rip roaring good time. Powell iterated in the past that government spending is essential, <laughs> shocker, and slow down a monetary stimulus now could hurt the global economy in worse ways than the current recessionary environment. There was a great video that was put on Twitter, and it just takes, takes a look at like how much we have already spent in America, I don't know about globally, uh, for, these, for this stimulus package. And I just want to show this to you, and it's only like 58 seconds long. This is crazy. So check this out. They're going to compare how much money we spent and how it looks just in scale. So this, of course, 100 bucks. Here's 10,000 bucks. Not too. Uh, here's a million. That looks very nice. Here's 100 million. All right. And then let's take a look over here. This is 2 trillion quarantine package. This is from 340 billion in supplemental spending, hospitals, VA. That's fine. Hey, sure. 221 billion in business tax benefits. All right. Here's 150 billion. Uh, for the states, 500 billion for state loans, uh, 349 billion for I don't know what it is, 300 billion, 250 billion unemployment insurance, and some more stuff that is just crazy. 400 billion bank bailout. So that's all the stimulus, and this is 27 billion, which is what the Fed prints every day and dumps into the market. That's crazy amount of money. And when you put it into scale like that, you're like, holy smokes, we spent that much money? Unbelievable. So when we talk about, you know, 
is Bitcoin, cryptocurrency digital assets, a pretty good hedge against what's going on? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. So to finish up, uh, there's a risk on environment activated. So what they're talking about here is that there was a bullish rally uh, in the stock markets, which was paused a couple days ago. The S&P dipped 2.6%. I probably think it's going to go way lower than that as time goes on. And because of this uh, new talk about the vaccine, tech stocks plummeted. Uh, things like uh, Zoom and Netflix and everything else, uh, they plummeted way down because they're like, oh, we're not going to use Zoom anymore. We're not going to use Netflix, which is stupid. Of course we are. So uh, people picked it up for cheap and it went up 2%. So good for those guys. This was interesting. Gold, uh, on the other hand, held on to losses and was trimmed down to around 1870, even though it's got, had a high at 1950. So look, I'm not going to uh, poo-poo all over gold. I still think you should have uh, gold, silver, Bitcoin in your portfolio. I just think you should have more uh, Bitcoin, or at least for me. I can't tell you what to do. I'm not a financial analyst. And then Bitcoin broke, broke above its yearly high as it tested 16 for the second time, and it's changing hands around 15.9. I think it's going to uh, jump above 16. But I could be wrong. I, maybe it goes on to 15 or 14 or whatever else. That's why I'm always saying dollar cost average. I used to think that in 2017 that Bitcoin was going to go to the moon and it was going to go to a million dollars like John McAfee said, and shyster. And uh, I was dumping a lot of money into it. And then I saw my portfolio dump in 2018 like nobody's business. And that's why I'm a little bit more um, seasoned and grizzled and whatever you want to call it. But uh, I'm just telling you the, the things that I went through and that's why I do and say the things I do. So look, that's what's going on in the in the macro environment. Let me just think of the comment section. Let's move on to the whole thing with Celsius. So if you don't know, yesterday uh, we had this great premiere where I went through a, well, about a five or 10 minute session where I talked about, one of the things we talked about was, you know, why my website is 100% for free. And just so you know, uh, the link to the website is in the description below. It's danteacherscrypto.com, 100% for free. Very uh, streamlined and easy way to understand crypto and how to buy things and how to do things, all that good stuff.